Now, welcome back to Hot Topics TV. Listen, I don't normally show my face on these videos, but today I had to step in the room. I had to show my face for this one. I just witnessed in the YNW Melly murder trial craziness. Okay? Craziness. Now, when I tell you that YNW Melly, his, his team, his defense team, they had nothing before. Like, they didn't have anything substantial that could back YNW Melly up. They didn't have anything substantial that could differentiate from what the prosecution had laid out. All the evidence the prosecution had laid out. I was sitting up here expecting YNW Melly's attorneys to, when it was their turn, that they were going to bring in their own experts that was going to go against what the prosecution was saying. I was expecting they were going to bring in a bunch of different witnesses to corroborate a story that he was with them creating his alibi. They brought one person in. One person. And that one person... Hmm. I don't know if I want to call this perjury or if I, but this to me was like, it was like a desperate attempt. It's, it's like a man that was drowning and he had to grab at a straw or a leaf. You know damn well that straw or that leaf is not going to save you, but you don't have a choice. You're going down, right? So you got to grab something and this is what they did today. So the headline says YNW Melly's best friend took the stand today and defended him. I'm saying to myself, best friend, because I watched the YNW Melly documentary and all that. As far as I know, Juvie, right in front of YNW Melly, said they met in kindergarten. So if I've been rocking with you since kindergarten, how come you got a best friend after I died? And this best friend said on the stand today that y'all met in the sixth grade. You met this person six years after you met me. I've been like this with you since kindergarten. But they described him as YNW Melly's best friend. I said, all right, go ahead and tell your story. I ain't reading too deep into it, right? YNW Melly's homie says, I got my little footnotes, y'all, because I got to get right on this one in the right and proper way. YNW Melly homie said that YNW Melly got out of the gray Jeep after they left the studio. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Remember, YNW Melly already lied to them, right? First of all, Bortland lied to them when Bortland told them that he was the only one in the Jeep with the two bodies, and boom, he didn't mention Melly. Then, later on, it was proven by video from the studio that they were leaving. You seen all of them piling into them two vehicles, right? The gray Jeep, the one that got shot up, the one that had the two bodies in it, the one that Bartlett was driving, and then the red Jeep. This man comes into court today to say, yes, you saw him get in the gray Jeep, the one that got shot up, the one that had the two bodies in it, but somewhere down the road, away from, away from camera view, we stopped, and they asked them, you stopped, and what happened? And Me he said, and Melly got out off the gray Jeep and got into the red vehicle with us. Oh, my days. Oh, my word. Melly got out of the gray Jeep, got into this vehicle. Now, that's a bombshell, right? Because what this can actually do is create some kind of a doubt in the juror's mind like was he actually in the vehicle did he actually leave the vehicle hmm maybe he did leave the vehicle and he wasn't there when the murder took place and all that so who shot from the back seat because right now this is where the prosecution's case lies we saw melly get into the vehicle he was sitting right there in that place in that seat According to forensics and trajectory measurement and all this other fancy scientific stuff, right? It shows that the gunshots came from right where Melly was sitting. His defense team says, not if we can take him out of that vehicle. Now you're going to have to go find out who was in that vehicle. One thing we know for sure, Bortland never left that vehicle. Man, they throwing Bortland under the bus so bad. I'm trying to tell you right now that if I was Bortland, I would actually be like, fuck it. I don't want to be nobody's friend at this point. At this point, 
Your defense is trying to fry me so they can free you. So I have to step up and say something. Right now, the best thing for Bortland to do would be Bortland to be like, listen, let me tell y'all the truth. Um, and I don't give a damn who says snitch. I'm not doing a life sentence on this, right? So he'll be, Bortland, the only way he could defend himself right now if he doesn't get rolled up with all this is for him to say, look, Melly was in the back of the Jeep. Y'all seen him get in on tape. That's exactly where he sat. That's exactly where he fired from, right? We had talked about it before. We, I knew it was going to happen. I was bracing myself for it. And when he did it, he did it. He shot uh, Juvie first, and then he sat, shot sack, sack Chaser, or he sat, shot Sack Chaser first in the front. He slumped over, then he shot Juvie. He was sitting right next to him, right? Juvie was in shock. Juvie went to go reach for the door lock, and he shot him too. Then, after that, you know, we took it to a location, and we staged it, and we got out the car, and then I took the gun, and I was shooting on the outside of the vehicle trying to stage the murder scene. If Bortland could do that, right? Because that's the only thing that's going to save him. Right now, they're trying to pin all this on Bortland. But anyways, back to what happened in court today. By the defense bringing in this so-called Melly's best friend to say that Melly left that vehicle and got in a vehicle with them before anything happened and they went home. Hmm. Who shot from that back seat left corner? That question is up in the air now. Did anyone get out of the red vehicle when y'all stopped and got into the gray vehicle like switched places with Melly? And if it was, who was it? Check it. Everybody that got into the red vehicle was seen on tape getting into the red vehicle. He testified on the stand that everybody that got into the red vehicle on tape stayed in the red vehicle on tape. So... That would leave Juvie, Sack Chaser, two dead homies, and Bortland, three people alone in that vehicle, right? Unless Bortland picked somebody else up along the way, right? All kinds of doubts are established now. Hmm. He said when they heard the news that Juvie and Sack Chaser had got killed, Melly was already at the house with everybody else. We went home, you know what I'm saying? We got in the red vehicle, we went home. The gray Jeep went its separate way, we went home. We got home, we was chilling, people were tired, everybody went to their rooms, we went to go sleep, and then like 40 minutes or so later, you know, phones started going off, phones started going off, we're getting the message. Everybody is jumping up out of their sleep, everybody is crying, and this was at Melly's house, he said, right? Hmm, okay. He even went as far as to say, everybody is jumping up, everybody is getting the news, and we're crying, right? And Melly was right there with us. So he's finding out the same time the rest of us are finding out that this had just happened. Boom. Melly starts looking for his phone because he's trying, he wants to call people and get in touch with people, and that's when he realized. Damn, I don't have my phone. Where's my phone? So he's looking for his phone, right? Could you see how staged this is? He's looking for his phone. So they are establishing that Melly got out of the vehicle and Melly did not have his phone on his person. Somebody else must have been using that phone. And that is the reason why if the cell towers track the phone, to where those two bodies were in that gray vehicle that got shot up. That was not Melly that was there. That's what the defense is trying to uh, establish. Well, guess what? Hmm. At Melly's house upon hearing the news, they left and went to Fredo Bang's house. That's what he said on the stand. When they heard the news, there was all at Melly's house. Everybody was in their room. Boom. When they all got up, they got together and they went over to Fredo Bang's house. This contradicts. Y'all remember Glass? Y'all remember the dude they called Mr. Glass? The one that had the dreads and he was trying to put the dreads over his eyes and he was testifying from behind the computer monitor. And then he was the one that actually said uh, he wished he had smoked before he came to court. Y'all remember him in a red jacket? Okay. His account is completely di different from this individual's account. 
Glass is on video as one of the persons who entered the red Jeep that night when Melly and Portland and Sack Chaser and Juvie entered the other Jeep that night. Glass testified in court that they never stopped. They never stopped. They stopped one time. And the one time they stopped was when they hit the guard shack. Because remember, the lawyer said to him, so you guys never stopped. And he says, no, I never said that. I said, we stopped once. And the, the, the lawyer was like, okay, you stopped once. When was it? And he said, we stopped once when we hit the guard shack. So you live in a gated community. There's a security guard shack right at the front gate. You can't get in unless you get through those security guards at the guard shack. You're going to have to stop for them to check your credentials, see who's in the car, all that, right? So they stops at the guard shack and he says that's when he woke up momentarily and then he went back to sleep until they got up to the house, right? They asked them already, where was Melly? He says, Melly was in the other vehicle. So at no point did you ever stop and Melly got out of the gray vehicle and come into the red vehicle. He said, no, Melly got, Melly stayed with the gray vehicle and they went about their business. We went to the house. I went to bed. We were tired. We were all falling asleep in the studio. He's a producer, right? We all falling asleep in the studio. So everybody was tired. So we went to bed. I laid down. I'm trying to get some sleep. Then boom, a couple of minutes later, my phone starts going off. I pick the phone up eventually, I find out I heard the news, what had just happened to Juvie and Sack Chaser. I get up, I drive to the hospital, this is glass. I drove to the hospital to find out, to confirm, and I met him there and I found out that it was real, it did happen. So then I went back to the house. When he went back to the house, he said, and this is Fredo Bang's house. Now remember, Scientific evidence has already placed YNW Melly at the murder scene. And it keeps him there. His cell phone is pinging off the same time Sack Chaser, YNW Juvie, and Bortland's phone, and Melly's phone in the same place that whole time. Up until when they changed directions and Bortland drove to the hospital and Melly started walking a different direction. That same cell tower actually also picked up who he was calling. He dropped his location. He was telling uh, Fredo Bang, come get me. He was telling Fredo Bang, come get me, right? Okay, so Fredo Bang went and picked him up. And so he ended up at Fredo Bang's house. That story is already corroborated by Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass said, first when he was there, YNW Melly was not there. The next time after he came back from the hospital, he saw YNW Melly, YNW Melly was dressed differently. He changed his clothes. Not only did he change his clothes, right? He said, they asked him if he was, he said he was grieving. They asked him if he was the only one that was grieving, he said yes. He was the only one that was grieving. He ain't say everybody was grieving like this new dude that took the stand. He said everybody was grieving. Mr. Glass said he was the only one that was grieving. Okay? That means they wasn't feeling no remorse. They knew what had went down. They was trying to... Listen. Uh, to me, man, this, like, this, this looked like it could be perjury. It, it, it could be. You don't just pull this out at the last minute. And then you got a homie that says, yo, I'll do anything for my homie not to go to jail. I'll even take the stand and I'll, I'll testify and tell some lies saying he was with us. Try to create an alibi. Last minute. Last minute. Right? This contradicts Glass' testimony. Glass said that they all left the studio, as you saw in the video, and the only time his vehicle stopped was at the guard shack, the entry to the house. Prosecution had a field day with this. 
Prosecution starts asking him, cross-examining him, this new guy that testified. The prosecution asked him, are you 100% sure that Melly got into the red vehicle to go home? He said, yes. Are you 100% sure that Melly got the news of Sack Chaser and Juvie's death the same time as you all did? He said, yes. 100% sure that Melly was looking for his phone like he lost it right when y'all got that message. Just realizing then that he didn't have his phone on him. He said, yes. I'm sorry, y'all, but I don't think the jury is going to buy this. And in closing argument, the prosecution is going to murk this. They're going to shut that down. They're going to use this as... Um, they're going to be able to show the jury that, listen, if the defense had this before, they would have pulled this out a long time ago. A long time ago, the defense would have been arguing that you cannot place my client with that phone because we have somebody who already can corroborate his story that he left that vehicle shortly down the road after you saw him get in on tape and he was no parts of that and he received the message of his friend's death the same time everybody else is everybody else did. He was with a group of people that could corroborate that story. This guy comes in at last minute to do all this. Now, in his statement, when all this was fresh, she asked him, "How come you never mentioned any of this when you when we first spoke to you back when?" He says, "I couldn't recall. It was five years ago. Um, but you said something totally different." He's, do you remember what you said? He says, I don't remember. She said, if you read your, your testimony or your story from what you gave us from back then, would it refresh your memory? He says, I don't really know. She says, read these couple of lines right here. He reads it, and then he goes, uh, I don't remember. The phone by GPS tracking also traveled to the video shoot hours after. Remember, there was a video shoot shortly after, and a lot of people were saying, damn, you lost your homeboys, your closest friends, like a few hours ago, and you out here shooting a video like you in high spirits? You don't look like you in mourning. Guess what? Them cell towers tracked that same cell phone that Melly had, and or that is supposed to be Melly's phone, and it even showed up there at that video shoot, right? Who was at the video shoot with the phone on them? Melly was there. Did he have his phone on him? Or somebody else had his phone and was holding it? People, I don't know. Right now, they're trying to figure out what to say to the jury, how to instruct the jury, um, you know, how to find different levels of guilty or whatever, or innocent, or throw the case out, or whatever. And the judge ended this one by saying... We will get back here tomorrow at 1.30. So we'll see them tomorrow at 1.30. Right now, I thought the prosecutor, the, 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 I, thought the, I thought the defense was going to be here for like three, four days with a lot of stuff to say, to try to save this man from a guilty verdict and a death penalty. And this is all they came with. A desperate last minute attempt. Hmm. I don't think this is gonna go in Melly's favor. I'm just saying, right? So we just gonna have to see how this turns out and I'll be right back on top of it tomorrow, watching it, seeing it and witnessing it. And I expect that they should wrap this up by the end of the week. Today is Tuesday, Wednesday, we have Thursday, Friday. By the time Friday comes, we should probably have all closing arguments in and the jury will be able to begin deliberating over the weekend and hopefully by Monday morning, there will be a verdict. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. You think that YNW Melly is going to prison or you think that he is going to walk? I'll catch y'all in the next video, man. It's Hot Topics TV. Y'all already know if the topic is hot, I'm on it. <laughs> I'm out. Peace.